people I am finally back with another IKEA hack and I've really missed doing those and it's been a long time in the making. My husband and I are going to be doing a lot more IKEA hacks in February and also in March. We were actually going to get the keys for our new home in the middle of January but there's been a two week delay on the whole building process. Um, that's really a shame but now we have a new date and it's the 1st of February. So we are really looking forward to that so we can start doing all of our IKEA hacks and organizing and moving in. It's gonna be so great. And I'm of course gonna share all of that with you and I am really, really looking forward to that. Well, enough about that. Today's video is an IKEA hack slash makeover of the IKEA Kura children's bed. And I've also included a sewing tutorial for you. Um, I got my mom's sister to help me because I don't know a lot about sewing. I would really love to learn that someday. That would be awesome. But for this, I needed a little help and I was so lucky that she wanted to help me. That was really nice of her. But after seeing how to make these curtains, I would say that anyone, pretty much anyone with just like basic knowledge of how to sew and basic knowledge of how to use a sewing machine should be able to make these curtains. Cause they really are super simple to make. I promise you that. Honestly, this bed has so much potential for great hacks and there are so many possibilities. It really just depends on what your child likes and what they're into, but this is my version of it. So here we go. This bed is gonna be in my daughter's room. She is two years old, so it's limited how much I can actually ask her what what she wants, what she likes. But I know that in general, she likes stuff that looks really girly. That's also what I've chosen to go with for this hack. I wanted to keep it simple, so I've chosen to paint it and add three curtains made of sheer fabric to it, two curtains in the front and one on the side. I started off by sanding the whole bed lightly and then wiping it off, making sure to remove all of the sanding dust. Before you apply the primer, you should place the bed on some small blocks because it'll be easier to paint the part of the frame closest to the floor that way. I used my kids' wooden building blocks for this with a piece of paper on top to protect them from getting stained. True to my love of neutral interior, I chose to paint the bed in a neutral tone even though it's a bed for my daughter's room. The way I see it, you can always add color to it in other ways when decorating your kid's room with cushions, plush toys, or bed linen with the colors that your kid likes and whatnot. I haven't planned out the interior for my daughter's room in our new home yet, so I thought that it would be safest to keep it neutral because in that way it'll fit in no matter what we decide to do when we get there. Then I applied the primer and then two coats of my favorite white tone with medium gloss that I've used for many other projects as well. It's the perfect mix of cold and warm white tones without it appearing too cold or too warm. I did the exact same thing to the curtain rods. They originally come in this wooden color and of course, they needed to be the same color as the bed. I got mine on Etsy and many Etsy shops across the world have them. I just typed in curtain rod Ikea Kura. If you choose a sheer thin fabric made of viscose or polyester like I've done, you need to get a specific needle for your sewing machine and also a specific thread made to sew in thin fabrics like this. If, however, you're using cotton or another type of thicker textile, you don't need a specific needle or thread. But if you're using fabric made of cotton, you'll have to wash it before working with it because it will shrink the first time you wash it and it would be such a bummer to have sewn the curtains and one day when you need to wash them, they're suddenly too short afterwards. And since these curtains are going to be in a children's room, uh, there's a, a big possibility that you will one day need to wash them because they get dirty and stained. I promise you that. So if you're using cotton, please remember to wash it first. We'll start by cutting the fabric into the sizes that we need each curtain to be. And since we're sewing three curtains, we'll be cutting out three pieces of fabric, all of them the exact same sizes. So we have two pieces for the longer side of the bed and one for the shorter side. They are pretty wide, but that's because I wanted there to be lots of cringles and waves when they're hanging, but you don't have to make them as wide as these. That's up to you. 
If you're working with cotton, you turn the edges of the curtain panel sides two centimeters and iron it so that you get a nice and sharp look. Then fold it over two more centimeters and iron again. And if you're working with a type of fabric similar to this one, you're going to fold the edges two centimeters under twice and not iron it. As you go along, you put in needles to keep your fabric still. And next you have to do a basting stitch to make sure that the fabric does not move at all. This is because that this kind of fabric just moves a lot whenever you touch it and you can't iron the edges like you can with cotton. So now we're doing the basting stitch. You take your needle and some thread of a contrasting color and make these long stitches all the way down like this. When you reach the end, you just pull out the needle and leave the thread. When you've sewn the side hems on the sewing machine, you can easily pull it out again. Backstitch at the beginning and at the end to secure the stitching. Now you just have to repeat that on all of the curtain sides. Next, we're going to make the top hem, which is going to form the rod pocket. This rod measures 18 millimeters, so the rod pocket is going to be four centimeters. As long as the rod pocket is about twice the size of the diameter of the curtain rod, it'll be fine. So you turn it two centimeters under and then four centimeters under. The measurements are the same if you're using cotton, you just iron it instead of doing basting stitches. Place the needles as you go and then you're going to do basting stitches once again. Now sew along the bottom crease of the hem and once again remember to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. Now for the bottom. I wanted my curtains to touch the floor when hanging and the total length of my curtains ended up being 84 centimeters. To get the same result as I did, you have to fold it 5 centimeters under twice. Then put in needles and basting stitches like before and sew the bottom hem on the sewing machine on all of your curtains. To make sure that your curtains are the exact length that you want, I'd recommend that you put up the rods and after you've sewn the rod pockets, you put up the curtains and you take a precise measurement of your curtains and decide what length they're going to be. It's a lot easier when they're actually hanging on the rod that they're supposed to be hanging on. And then afterwards you can just like adjust the length to your wishes. Then after this, I had my husband install the curtain rods on the bed. It's pretty easy and when you buy these specific rods, you also get a manual showing you how to install them. So I won't go into details here. Startled our eyes, we let go of disguise And now I actually discovered that two of these wide rod holders were missing. All of the screws were there, but unfortunately we had to order the rod holders online before we could put up the last curtain. Okay, finally we were able to hang the curtains and there it is, the last curtain right here. These are the ones that we got at a separate website, these ones right here, and they look exactly like the ones that we got that came with the rods. So if that happens to you as well, fear not, it's easy to find something that fits. Um, these are 18 millimeters and they fit the rod perfectly. I think it turned out really well. and. I love the crinkle effect and all the waves that that creates. And I also love that they touch the floor. Um, gives it such a relaxed look, I think. Really like it. Hand in hand, building castles out of sand, reaching for the ground. about the result. It looks really, really good and my kids love it too. It's so great for them. As I said, this is gonna be my daughter's bed, but my son actually thinks this is pretty cool as well. At last, I just wanna say thank you for watching this video. I hope that I was able to inspire you and if you like this video, please 
make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more interior content and more ikea hacks i promise that there will be a lot more of that in the future in the new year um, when i have a lot more time my oldest kid is starting kindergarten and that will give me so much more time to do stuff like this i really can't wait for that to happen it's gonna be so so great thank you guys for watching bye